Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Dead Dodge Garage. And this ginormous car, which I can't even get in frame, is a 1968 Imperial Crown Coupe. Notice I did not say Chrysler Imperial. In these years, Imperial was its own line. It was supposed to be fancy, you know, like a Cadillac or whatever. I actually owned a 71 Cadillac Fleetwood for a time, and I can't help but notice the similarities between that car and this one. The Imperial was Chrysler's creme de la creme. The highest quality, most expensive, most luxurious, most excellent vehicle they had on offer. Rear fender skirts covering the wheels. Did I already say that there's a lot of Cadillac in this car? There's a lot. This floating emblem might be the single coolest thing about it. It's also a handle to reveal the gas filler. There is a lot of chrome trim on this thing. And again, it's all special and bespoke. Crown Coupe. Wow. Little tiny vinyl top. Notice the faded paint on this thing. Aside from that, it's in really good shape. Okay, there is a scrape, a small dent, and then a pretty major dent here on the driver's door. I'm fairly confident we could kick that one out at least. To do that, of course, we'd have to get on the back side of it by removing the driver's door panel. And that would be challenging. Now, one might look at the body of this car and assume it's at least vaguely similar to other full-size Chryslers from a similar year. One would be wrong. Just about everything on it is Imperial specific. The dash, the trim, the switch gear, all of it. I really like this brushed looking stuff. Unfortunately, it's all falling off. And as you can see, a bunch of pieces are already missing. We do have a pile of parts for this thing, so they may well be in there. Now, as Imperials go, this is actually a bit of a stripper model. It doesn't have cruise control. It doesn't have tilt telescoping column. It doesn't have AM FM radio. It only has AM, which is hiding in here. Isn't that cool? does have rear speaker, and it's supposed to have a power antenna, although that's missing. It is equipped with Chrysler's auto temp system, which is apparently terrible and pretty much always broken. Of course, that's here because Cadillac. I know I keep saying Cadillac a lot, but I swear there's a reason for that. Anyway, my 71 Fleetwood also had automatic temperature control, and in that car, it worked. This is neat. Hmm, electrical parts, that's a good sign concealed door handle and there's actually a light bulb back here that illuminates it as well now of course this car has power windows but it has a manually cranking open vent window and the crank for that looks just like the standard chrysler window crank but like half as long it's so cute that emblem is everywhere and it's really cool more chrome bars they were really big on the chrome bars on this car oh yes and there's a convenience light too you could probably already guess this is a very large car the interior seating space quite wide. But look at this. Look how wide the fender is. There's a cover to enclose that opening because it's that big. You could like wedge your whole foot in there. If you know anything about Imperials, you know they're absolutely legendary in the demo derby. That would be part of it. Everything is just huge. There's all this extra space for defense. But we are missing a trim piece here, although I think it may be in the trunk. Anyway, the back seat's pretty nice too. More leather, more fancy emblems, and uh, more nifty trim. Ooh, armrest. Ah, uh, my Fleetwood had little fold down footrest things. This doesn't have that feature. No deal. Of course, as you can see, it's got bucket seats, which are also special Imperial pieces, and it does have a buddy seat armrest in the middle. It's got vents on the bottom of the dash for your, you know, nethers, for your ankles or whatever. You know, this is not bad. I could do a road trip back here. I think I've decided I'd rather enjoy this car from the comfort of the back seat. Maybe we'll make Tom drive it. Ah, yes. Cigar lighter. Very good. You know, I watched Tom's video on this car and the convertible that came with it, which we'll talk about later. And I got pretty excited right away because, well, the interior's nice and it looks very comfortable. I like comfortable. Now, it does become immediately apparent that uh, there have been some electrical issues. I mentioned earlier the Imperial specific switch gear, the headlight switch, part of the equation there. Apparently there was a problem because there's a spare one of those in the glove box, then there's this, and then there's a spare one of these in the door pocket. Another Cadillac knockoff feature is found here under the car, the double card and U-joint arrangement there at the front of the drive shaft. That's to absorb vibration and give quiet drive shaft operation. Isn't that neat? 
While we're under here, this is a good time to point out that this is actually a unibody car. It's got a bolt-in stub frame or front subframe. Up till 1966 though, the Imperial still had full frame rails. This car has single exhaust, but you can see here on the driver's side, there is a cutout for a second pipe. That's pretty cool. More special stuff. I found a random knob and it's the trip meter reset. It might even work. Why does it move the odometer too though? More coolness, the glove box. In here, there's a factory glove box manual. USAA automobile portfolio, nifty. There are also some random parts, like a power steering pump seal kit and uh, an oil pump set. Hmm. Ah yes, the flasher switch is hidden in here as well. And there would definitely be a glove box light if we had a battery. Here's your ashtray. You gotta have an ashtray. Well, without further ado, let's pull this thingy and go look under the hood. <sighs> oh look, a 440. This vehicle has Chrysler cleaner air package. Wow. This has to be the only car made by Chrysler in the classic era that was large enough to make the 440 look small. Now we've been led to understand that this is a rebuilt 440. Unfortunately, we don't really have details or more of the story as this car and the other one and a bunch of other things came from an estate. The owner is uh, no longer around to ask. Now I could be wrong, but seeing as how this is a 68, I don't think the engine should be blue. I'm pretty sure it should be turquoise. Now this is cool. Unfortunately, it is super faded and flaky, but this is an original correct Imperial pie tin. And under that pie tin and the humongous air cleaner that I can't lift with one hand at all. Ah, oh good, it's a Carter. That means we actually have a shot here. As near as I can tell, they rebuilt the engine but put all the original pieces right back where they're supposed to be. All the air conditioning stuff is here. Everything, really. Admire the giant voltage regulator on the bracket there on the passenger inner fender. That too is Imperial specific. Anyway, as you can see, this thing looks to be in good shape, like it was serviced not too long ago. Like this engine may have barely run since it was installed. It's full of nice clean oil, so that's a good sign. We did already check, and it's full of brake fluid too, although it's pretty nasty. Wow. Okay. Well, I like our chances here because it's full of green coolant and uh, there was pressure in there. Of course, it's got the original points. We may well have to scrub those, but we'll find out in a minute. This car definitely hasn't run in a couple years, but we're not really sure what a couple means. It could be four or five. According to the smell in here though, yeah, I mean, it's aged slightly, but it still smells like gasoline, so hopefully it'll burn. Wow, look at the brake lights hidden in that fancy chrome thing. Donkeys! Now I do have one question. If this engine was just rebuilt and everything's all blue, why isn't the oil pump? That appears to have been installed recently. I mean, relatively recently. And it was still bare metal, which is now rusted a bit but the bolts holding it on are blue, which means there was a different pump on the engine when it was finished. Why would they have changed the oil pump? Why was there an extra oil pump gasket in the glove box? These are questions I do not want answered. Well, I just learned something. Remember a bit ago when I was like implying that this was a factory engine? Uh, it's not. I happened to notice up here on the ID pad, which if you don't know, lives there under the AC compressor where it's impossible to see that it is identified as a 7T440. This is actually a late 70s cast crank block. It's got the original intake and other parts on top though, so that's interesting. Despite having the later block, it does have the standard forged crank harmonic balancer on it. That leads me to believe that it has all the earlier guts and they just changed the block. But again, we don't really know. If it fires up and vibrates like crazy, I guess then we will know. Ooh. Cuda noises. Hey, we need that, that's important. Yes, the ground is red. No, I don't know why they did that. Wow, that one works. I'm most displeased by this though. Oh yeah, that's cool. Although those parking lights aren't supposed to be lit up with the headlights. Running lights, notice those middle ones are way too bright. Same exact issue you always see on the 69 Charger. The bulbs they put in there are not the right ones. Power disc brakes. That kind of seems like a Ford thing to do. Okay, now this is interesting. With the running lights on, the brake lights work. And we know that because of the dip in the amp gauge. 
but I also had Tom check. With the running lights off though, there are no brake lights. I'm confused. For science, let's see if the starter does anything. We've got a gas gauge and all the other gauges moved a little bit too. That's interesting. Do you hear the weak hole? There's a relay somewhere doing fun things. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> well, it's a nice start. Not so much over there. Or there. Just with that small amount of cranking, we've already got fuel. Now notice it doesn't look the best, but also the filter was kind of colored that way already. I'm still hoping this is gonna fly. Well, this is definitely a remanufactured distributor. And I know that because they cut the vacuum pods open to replace the diaphragms, and then they crimp this extra piece on the outside. Anytime you see that, you know it's not an original build. I'm gonna jump the relay here with a screwdriver as I usually do. And we'll watch for sparks on the coil wire there to find out if I need to scrub the points. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but I'm seeing teeny tiny little sparks. Tom arrives, almost as if we planned this this way. There's not enough to fill the walls. Dribble it down the thing. It's going to pump its own gas in mere moments. The spark did look kind of weak, but I'm feeling confident. So uh, let's see what happens. Would you quit that? Yeah, that makes sense. choke open all the way. That's interesting. The vacuum pull-off is adjusted wrong, which you do by bending the rod on it. So it's pulling the choke all the way open as soon as it runs and jumping it down to hot idle. That's why it won't idle. Well, give it a minute. I bet it will. I'm seeing some smoke and smelling some coolant. I did notice the water pump's been done as well, so hopefully it's not that. Not the coolant smell, it's coming out around an exhaust bolt. That's not all that uncommon. Hey, I can't help but notice it actually runs really well. Nice! Aha! Uh -huh. A little sooty. <laughs> hey, this is all looking good. Yeah, it's better. All the others are still dead, but I'm hearing clicking noises from the motors. The booster works. Although there's a pretty pronounced dip in engine RPM when I hit it. We even have a working accelerator pump, I think. I put it in neutral to make sure the torque converter's filled. Yeah. Transmission's good. It always is. Yeah, the coolant smells pretty bad. Anyway, here's how you adjust the pull-off rod. There. Now we'll have some choke. There's some oil smoke here too, so I went ahead and snug down the valve cover bolts. Listen to this thing now. It's awesome. Ugh. Okay, well, there's that, I guess. Like it never happened. I hereby declare this Imperial open. That's why I keep hitting the horn. Uh, most displeasing. Are you most displeased back there? I am, Jenkins. And the lack of leg room. Yeah, maybe I couldn't ride in this for 3,000 miles. It uh, might have a miss. But it's a 440, so at least one cylinder's extra. Yeah, that's brakes. This is mint. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> brakes work. We're missing the ashtray door on this side in the back. No deal. Ooh, the reading light function works. Dude, there's actually a rear passenger door handle because obviously you're going to be riding in the back, but will it do a burnout? <laughs> Part of that surprise. Oh, God. Oh. 
<laughs> and it died. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> all right well it just smoked the one but uh it smoked it pretty good it's still going look at the smoke <laughs> it's rolling out of the quarter panel it's still here i just learned something else the seat reclines <laughs> That is not a normal muscle era Mopar feature. Well, was it? <laughs> Again! Hey, guess what? Every time! Seat reclines. That's awesome. Oh no! This is an early car. It might have been a dealer promo car. It's right about in that era. Right. Although usually there were more options than this. This right. has like no options. That's on what it. I was thinking. Why would they do that with a stripper car? Turn signals work? Oh, I shouldn't have headlights on, huh? So they were. Lights. Oh yeah, there's no brake lights without uh, running lights as well. Turn signal doesn't stay. Oh, what? Salted the road. Oh no. That guy's driving. Don't be a coward. Well, they probably. <laughs> <laughs> the tires are square. It's not ideal. Flintstones. I wish my window worked. Did you try it from over there? Yeah. Ooh, that's not good. Oh. That's not great. There might be a slight braking issue. You know, at least I have my own reading lamp. Oh, it actually turns on both of the back ones. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> the brakes have issues. Yeah. It's like a pulsing. Oh, yeah. It's either it's a horrible rust patch or it's a warped drum. And it feels like the front left, but maybe it's all. Could be a warped rotor, too. Oh, I forgot it's got front discs. Yeah, so a warped rotor. Look, somebody else is doing a burnout. Look at all the smoke. <laughs> that or someone's house is on fire. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get you in the shot at all. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of the salt on the road right now, though. That's unfortunate. Yeah. This thing is rust free, minty fresh. It'd be nice to keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking uh, warped rotor. Yeah, good thing they're completely out of tanium and you can't find any of this stuff. Hey. One more time. For posterity? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That wasn't, that wasn't quite as impressive. <laughs> I wasn't trying as hard. That's a sticky tire. I'm gonna call that a giant success on pretty much every level. Agreed. This is my new office. I'm gonna do all my paperwork. And... <laughs> I need a like desk though. There's the coolant smell again. Look at this. I can let myself out. That is the best. I can't smell anything but burning rubber in here. It's terrible. Anyway, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Jamie, you've convinced me that is a very nice driving highway cruising vehicle with plenty of horsepower that does good burnouts and all sorts of things. But what's it like off road? You know, is it really like the ultimate handling, drifting mud vehicle? I'm glad you asked because I was wondering the same thing. There's a lot of dirt and grass on my car, I wonder why. It's not a sure grip. Now he's stuck. In a word, yes. Man, now I'm gonna have to wash it. Maybe if we hadn't aired up the tires, this would have worked better. Nope. Well, it's worth a shot. You can do it! Maybe. Maybe not. This is why you're supposed to order the Sure Grip. Easy. Uh, well, we learned the rear left brake doesn't really work. Yes! No! 
gonna be really embarrassing if Tom has to drag this out with the tractor, isn't it? He's never gonna let me hear the end of it either. Look at how smug he looks. This is terrible. <laughs> Your tractor is too small. Wow. Hey Rooster, you're welcome. The good news is I've reviewed the footage and it was all worth it. There's something very funny about this. For the record, I almost got it, but you know, time is money. I'm gonna have to wash the carpet. Hey, the good news is temperature's rock solid. We're still charging, got oil pressure. Yeah, you know, consider it tested. You wanna see us bury a, a Cummins truck? <laughs> Of course, it's time for a well-deserved bath. The 1968 Imperial Crown Coupe. Truly an excellent off-roader. This will come as a shock. I really like this thing. I'm almost sad that didn't turn into a breaking the body test situation. Beautiful. Why are you taking away my son? I like it. It needs a real hand wash. But wait, there's more. Barn find dust included free of charge. Yeah, that one's turquoise. That makes more sense. I don't know why I'm in here. There are no brakes or anything. Why am I always the crawling and dead stuff guy? I like the green one more. All the missing parts for the hard top are in here. Do I really have to do all of that a second time? Like burying it in the yard and everything, right? I don't know, the floppy roof just doesn't do it for me. The good news is, ooh, this one's got some cool patina. I do like the color. Under the hood, get another 440. This one's greasy. And uh, there's some other stuff about it too. Now this is a superior automobile. The dash covered in dials and switches, I will never understand. The electric top leaps up in my imagination because it's definitely all broken. It's not Cadillac's Twilight Sentinel, it's just Sentinel. Isn't that neat? And it has autopilot. Wow. I'm sure that doesn't work. Eh? Hmm. It's got buttons instead of a ring and the column does tilt. Now I mentioned auto temp earlier in the green car and uh, I wanna say what I said was it's always broken. This one's probably broken and we think that's why the dash is all apart. There's plenty of gas in here, but uh, it's not smelling good. Oh, I'm not gonna have a good time with this one, am I? Ugh, I'm going home. Yeah, the oil in this one was massively over full. It's horrible black sticky sludge and it smells like bad gas. You know what? I'm just gonna do this. Oh, I gotta clean all this before the Imperial guys see it. Like it never happened. This is a big car. Like really big. I gotta go get a snack, so. Figured I'd drive this thing. Why not? Only the passenger seat reclines. That's lame. I like this car a lot. Of course, 
course, I like a lot of cars a lot. I need to invest in like a 39 car garage. Yeah, I mean, even with the hand crank on the wing window, there's still wind noise. That's just a constant in the classic Mopar lifestyle. This thing drives nice. You know, I've never been one for naming cars, but I've named this one. It's the 4,500 pound pickle. <laughs> oh yeah. It's pretty much a slalom machine too, so. Ah, what the heck. Park it in the bush. 1968 Imperial Crown Coupe. A truly luxurious and premium vehicle for the discerning automotive buyer. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I did. Oh, it's a little late, but I got my corn dog. I even got mustard. Back to the field. Ah, I'm kidding. I think we've done enough. Anyway, thanks for watching. And remember, if you're gonna do the crime, you best be ready to do the time. Oh, I should check the timing. <laughs> Maybe I'll just drive this thing home. It's pretty good. <laughs>